Amen. It's great to see you on this Palm Sunday. I'm so glad that you are here, and I'm glad that people are joining us on television, and uh, we're just so glad for this time we're going to have together. I did want to mention a couple of announcements. Some folks are wondering about the Monday Thursday service. It is at 6.30 this Thursday. 6.30. What, what, when is it? 6.30. So uh, I want you to sort of all of a sudden think, well, it's Thursday. Oh, I need to be at the church at 6.30. It's because we really want to see you here for that time as we kind of bring home the good news of the gospel and the cross. Also, I uh, wanted to mention about Huey. Um, Huey fell and busted a bunch of ribs. So he's at uh, uh, the, the hospital Atlanta, well, Wellstar Atlanta Medical Center. And uh, uh, he's in intensive care right now. I think they're just wanting to watch him a little while to make sure there's no lung problems. And so you can, if you can remember to pray for him, and anybody that's ever had a broken rib knows how painful that can be. So. Keep Huey in your prayers. So you've been there? How many have been there with a broken rib? I thought I was going to die. I know what childbirth is like. I had three ribs broken. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. It was, really was. But, so keep Huey in your prayers. And shall we worship together on this Palm Sunday? Let's praise the Lord.
Should we just go ahead and have the benediction and go home? Thank you, Will. Thank you. Join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us enter the gates of righteousness, that we may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The Lord does marvelous things in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You are our God, and we will give thanks to you. You are our God, and we will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. may be seated. Shall we confess our sins together? We come before the Lord to say to him that we have fallen short and that we need him in our lives. Join me in a prayer of confession. God of heaven and earth, we give you thanks for sending us Jesus Christ in your name. 
even though we profess to follow him, waving palms and triumphantly shouting, we confess that in times of trial, we too often deny him. Speak to the Lord about personal things that are on your heart. Seek his forgiveness in this time of silence. Forgive us and heal us, we pray. Help us to put our faith not in the princes of the world, but only in the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say to you, brothers and sisters in Christ's name, that by his work upon the cross, by your acceptance of that, and by your admitted sinfulness, you are now cleansed of your sins. Amen. Now take a few moments to greet one another in the Lord. I would suggest a wave or maybe a word to someone nearby you. We're still dealing with this pandemic, so let's take a moment to greet one another and pass the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Well, you know, the Braves won the championship, and it was just great. They could never take away the pennant that we won. Uh, but there were a couple of older uh, guys who had been with the Braves, Jim and Joe. They'd been 
with him for a long time. And, and they were concerned about, they loved baseball so much. And Jim and Joe talked about baseball and they kept up with every single pitch. And, and uh, they remembered the days when they played and they were close friends. And so they made a pact and said, well, when you go up to heaven, you have to let me know whether they have baseball up there. So uh, sure enough, uh, Joe died after a while and um, his good friend uh, decided to, to was sleeping one night and, and uh, he felt kind of a nudge and, and, and there was his friend Jim and Jim said, well, yep, it's true. They've got baseball up here and it's great. It's really fun to be able to play again. That's the good news is that we can, we can play baseball. And uh, Joe said, well, what's the bad news? He said, well, you're scheduled to pitch in a couple of days. Young boy um, um, got sick. He was unable to come to church on Palm Sunday. And he, really, he was really sad about that. And uh, so his dad came in and his dad was holding a palm branch. And he said, he said what's that? And the dad said, well, it's Palm Sunday. We, had, we waved our palm branches and, and experienced Jesus you know, coming in and all that. And, and the little boy said, doggone it. The one time I don't go to church, Jesus shows up. Well, I think part of what we've been talking about over this time of Lent is the fact that Jesus shows up. Shows up at the crossroads of our life, and he shows up on the cross at the crossroads of his life. And so being with us during our difficult and crisis times also means that Jesus has made that possible through his death and resurrection. So I think it's good to think about that idea. We come to many times in our life when we're at the crossroads and we have to make difficult decisions. But it's also those same moments are the times when Jesus comes to be with us because he died for us and lives for us and is with us. Here's some of the things that we talked about. Uh, at the crossroads, when we are tempted. At the crossroads, when we're uncertain about the future. At the crossroads, when, we're, when the drought gets really bad at the crossroads when we feel really lost, and at the crossroads when we feel unwanted. It's a great good news that Jesus shows up to all of those places, and we can know that he is with us, and now we focus on the crossroads that's coming up, the crossroads of his death and resurrection. And so um, I think it's important for us to kind of figure out why this parade happened. I mean, we know why the Braves had a parade, and. And uh, I thought it was a bit much, but they had a great parade. And did you see the ring? that they, they gave out the rings. That's way too much. Way too much. But anyway, they had this big parade for the Braves. And, and so why did God just decide to throw this parade for Jesus? Because that's sort of what happened. Um, you know, why would he do this when the cross is looming? When some, this horrible thing that Jesus is going to have to go through is coming? Well, I would say to you that because Jesus was fully human, he needed encouragement from time to time. He needed encouragement. You might remember that when he was baptized, you know, a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Um, when, uh, when he was tempted by the devil, at the end of that, Jesus came and said, Jesus came to him and the devil left him until a later date. But Jesus was encouraged by God through that. If you think about the, uh, the um, um, oh, I can't think of the right word, you know? Sometimes it happens like that. You know, where Jesus went up to the transfiguration. One of the main reasons why there was the transfiguration was so that uh, Moses and I, uh, Elijah could encourage Jesus. And once again, when Jesus came down off that mountain, a voice spoke and said, this is my beloved son. And I think this also happened at the Last Supper. Uh, Jesus wanted to get out of it afterwards uh, when there was a prayer time and he wanted not to have to do this. And God said, no, you have to do it. And he said, whatever your will is, Lord, I will do it. But that's a chance for him to make an affirmation that was encouraging to him. And so I think in this passage, we have Jesus being encouraged by God through this, through this incredible, wonderful parade. 
It, it all comes from the Old Testament too, by the way. Jesus quotes three different scriptures to, to talk about the, the, um, this uh, Palm Sunday experience that was to come. In Zechariah, he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. So that's the way it looks like to have this time of, uh, of uh, triumph on Good Friday, I mean, on, on uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, and here's, that's from Zechariah. And here's the, what the psalmist says in 118. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And that's what the people were saying about Jesus. And then finally, um, the parade was God's idea. And when the Pharisees ordered him to stop it, he went back to the scriptures, the book of Habakkuk 2.11. The very stones will cry out from the wall and the plaster will respond from the woodwork. So all of these, this sort of framework for what we call Palm Sunday was set up by God to encourage him in all these things. So we know, you know what happened, we know what words were spoken, and we know what reason there was that they did this thing. The Pharisees didn't want it, but Jesus was involved in it because it was what God wanted. And it's great to celebrate together this idea that we, that, uh, we are blessed and that Jesus is coming in the name of the Lord. And don't you know that was really helpful to Jesus? As he was, I've been to Jerusalem, I've been on this walk that Jesus did, took that day from the Mount of Olives down into Jerusalem. And, and uh, I, I've been there and seen it. And it's just really an amazing experience to see what that's like and to be a part of that. And, and I think um, it's really important for us to remember uh, that Jesus would need encouragement again. Imagine facing the cross Imagine being tortured. Imagine being uh, falsely accused. Imagine by, by, the, by a corrupt judge. All these things were staring him in the face. So what would God do for him but throw him a parade to encourage him, to let him know that ultimately he is going to be the savior of the world. He is the king who will rule all. He's the Lord of the universe. And so th that's what this was all about. Now, most people don't know, but there was another parade that day. Have you ever heard that? There was another parade that day. Pilate was marching into the city of Jerusalem with all of his troops and all of the pomp and ceremony that you can imagine in a Roman parade. And they were having this, this they were coming in to make sure there was no trouble in Jerusalem, right? So there was Pilate and he was the ruler and there were trumpets and there were people dressed up in armor. Uh, there might've been chariots. There might've been captives brought forth. It was all about one thing. It was about asserting the power of Rome. Then you look at what Jesus did. You know, he was, he was uh, on, a, on a humble donkey that had never been ridden before. Can you imagine if, how that donkey must have felt? What are you doing on my back, you know? He's never been ridden before. And uh, the, the parade itself had to do with throwing cloaks down on the street and waving palm branches. And it was just a totally different way of thinking about who, what power is all about and who the true ruler of things is. So uh, it wasn't like Pilate's parade. It was Jesus' parade. And that's why I think it's important to think of it that way. Um, the, um, I think, you know, to me, it's a time of great joy to know that, that Jesus is the king, that he is the Messiah, and that he is, we can praise him and give him glory and honor. There's a speaker named Tony Campola, and he likes to get into trouble. He does all kinds of fun stuff, and his, his, his son has said, most of the time I get embarrassed about what my father does. I don't know if you have a father or grandfather or had a father or grandfather that specialized in making you be embarrassed. Well, that's kind of why this, this Tony Campola is a great preacher, but he also uh, kind of punishes his son. One of the things he likes to do is he likes to go on the elevator and do, and do some shenanigans. Like he'll turn and face an elevator full of people and say, I guess you're wondering why I call this meeting. That's supposed to be humorous. It's not, it's not required that you laugh. Well, maybe you'll like the next part. Um, so in, in one time he was standing at a full elevator in a skyscraper and he turned and faced them and he began to, 
uh, said, well, if we're going to be here for a while. We might as well enjoy being together. And so he began to sing, You Are My Sunshine, and got everybody on the elevator to sing, You Are My Sunshine. And he got off on the seventh floor, and somebody got off with him, and he said, oh, you're going to the same meeting I'm going to. And uh, the guy said, no, I just wanted to hear the end of the song. Um, so I think that what I'm trying to say is it's just, this is a difficult week uh, in lots of ways for Jesus. Maybe this time in our lives is a difficult time. But, you know, um, Jesus is still with us. Jesus is still showing up in all kinds of situations. No matter what you're going through at the crossroads, Jesus is showing up in your life. It might not be turning out the way you want it to. It might be more difficult than you thought it might be. It might be a situation where you've suffered and gone through a lot. I know many of you have. But it's true that Jesus is going to be with you. He's going to show up. He's going to, going to be there and help you to get through it. It might not be the way that you might like it to be, which might be easy or, uh, you know, very, very uh, neat and clean. But we know for sure that he is with us and that he shows up. He showed up um, outside the city of Jerusalem and gave us this day. And he showed up on the cross to die for us no matter how sinful we've been, no matter how much we've fallen short of what God wants. And he rose from the grave to, you know, and, and to give us new life because of his love and forgiveness for us. Jesus shows up at the crossroads. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Tell me, brothers and sisters, what do you believe? It's found in the affirmation of faith in your bulletin. Together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me.
Lord, across the universe, one thing is always true, that you are the Lord of that universe. We cannot comprehend how great you are, how powerful you are, and yet also gentle and loving. That perfect combination that we strive for ourselves, but fall so short. For Lord, you are fully strong and good at the same time. You amaze us with how you love us. And so, Lord, we come before you with deep concerns. The, uh, the fog of war covers this place called the Ukraine. Can you not bring peace there? An end to the killing, an end to the injustice. Oh, Lord, we just call out to you and say how much it hurts to see others hurt by a tyrant. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give our leaders wisdom and give the leaders of the Ukraine wisdom and also even the leader of Russia. And Lord, we also seem sometimes like this pandemic will never end. We know that there is some return of people getting it again. And we pray, Lord, that you would stem that tide right away because we like being with you and being together and being with our family. And so, Lord, would you bring an end to this plague? Lord, we think about Huey, and we pray for him now. It's a discouraging and difficult thing to, to be in his situation. Would you comfort him and strengthen him? And there are so many others that we know about, Lord. We just lift them all up to you now for a minute or so and ask that you would care for them and take care of them during this time. And Lord, may we see you showing up all during the rest of this week. May we see you there beside us. May we feel you tapping us on the shoulder. May we understand over and over again that at the most important moments of our life, you are there with us. And help us, Lord, to say yes to our part, to what you're calling us to do. Even if it's scary and hard to decide what it is, help us, Lord, to know what to do and then to say yes to what that is. Lord, we thank you so much for all the way that you've blessed us, and we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for the way that you've blessed us, and we thank you so much for what you've given us. May we be generous, but we know you love a cheerful giver. And we know, Lord, that you celebrated the good things of life, even in the midst of the difficulties. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks, take what we give, and multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen.
God goes with you. And as you go to the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you. Now and forever, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.